If you lose something in the water, you might never get it back again. That's especially true if we're talking about a sea, because the sea is a big place. Some truly remarkable things have been found in the world's waters over the years, some natural and some artificial. You're going to see some of the most fascinating of them in this video. In 1881, a vessel called the Ira, belonging to British polar explorer Benjamin Lee Smith, sank in the icy waters of the Arctic. That was the last anybody saw of it until October 2018, when the wreck was finally found by Russian divers. Identifying the long-forgotten wreck proved to be difficult until the divers found a rum container inscribed with the name of a wine and spirits retailer in Peterhead, Scotland. Having now verified the identity of the sunken vessel, we can finally say what happened to the Ira. It got caught between two massive ice flows close to Frank Joseph Island and was crushed between them and then sank. The vessel was a steam yacht with a 50 horsepower engine, which would have been considered specialist and advanced for the time. Amazingly, Smith and his team escaped from the vessel before it sank. Survival wasn't easy though. They spent 10 months living at a campsite in the Arctic until rescue finally arrived. Smith's achievements as an explorer have largely been forgotten, mostly because he was shy of publicity. His cousin, though, was far more famous. She was Florence Nightingale. The creatures that live in the world today are often wonderful and diverse, but the creatures that lived here millions of years ago might have been even more impressive. Here's one we only know because its fossil was found in Herefordshire, England in April 2019. It's a type of Silurian sea cucumber, and it comes complete with 45 arms. Scientists say that it would have lived beneath the water around 430 million years ago. If you're a fan of science fiction, you might feel like you've seen this creature somewhere before. Scientists agree with you. They've named the new species Solacina Cthulhu, after the monsters in the Cthulhu stories written by H.P. Lovecraft. The body of the sea cucumber is barely an inch wide, but its long tentacles allowed it to move across the seafloor and capture smaller sea creatures as food from long distances. Thirteen examples of the creature have been found in the Herefordshire region since the discovery of the first. It belongs to a now extinct group called Ophiocystoids, which were ancestors to all the sea cucumbers that still exist in the world today. There are many ways to dispose of an old car if you don't want it anymore. If you can sell it, you should sell it. If nobody wants to buy it, take it to a scrapyard. Please, whatever you do, don't dump it in a river. It's shocking to think that anyone would be selfish and careless enough to do so. But a whole nine cars were found when the Tuolatan River in Oregon, USA was dredged in April 2020. One of the nine was a classic Ford Mustang, but there's also a first-generation Mazda RX-7 among the collection. Divers working for the local authorities also recovered a 1960s Chevy sedan, a 1973 Ford Mustang Mach 1, and three trucks. A Chevrolet Silverado and a Ford F-Series car complete the set. At least some of the cars might have criminal connections because they were only found after a former getaway driver tipped off the police. The divers had the unpleasant job of verifying there were no bodies in the cars before they were pulled from the water, but fortunately none were found. It's likely there are still more vehicles embedded in the muddy depths further down the river. The Second World War might have gone very differently if British genius Alan Turing hadn't cracked the code used by the Nazis and allowed Allied intelligence officers to snoop on their communications. The moment the code was broken, the Enigma machines used by the Germans were useless, but they didn't know that, so they kept using them. Even at the end of the war, the Germans would throw the machines overboard or otherwise dispose of them to prevent them from falling into Allied hands. One of them was thrown into the Gelting Bay region of the Baltic Sea before a U-boat was scuttled in May 1945, but was found again in December 2020 by a team from the World Wife Fund for Nature as they trawled for fishing nets. The lengths that the Nazis went to when disposing of the machines means they're rare discoveries. 
So even one that's been underwater for 75 years is valuable. It was taken to the Museum of Archaeology in Schleswig, Germany, where it's slowly being restored before being put on display for the public. We're told that the water damage looks worse than it is. Every so often, a few buildings emerge from a lake in Italy and remind everybody that there used to be a village there long before the lake existed. This is Lake Resia, an artificial lake that was created in 1950 to enable the construction of a hydroelectric plant in the area. Creating the plant meant flooding the village of Curran in South Tyrol, which was home to hundreds of people when the plans were approved. It's difficult to imagine a similar plan gaining approval today. The lake is really a reservoir, and in May 2020, the reservoir was drained to enable repair work at the plant. That allowed people their first glimpse at the remaining buildings of Old Curran for the first time in years. Many structures were demolished ahead of the flood, but the 14th century church and its steeple are still standing. Elsewhere, it's still possible to see walls, stone staircases, and the cellars of old houses. The lake freezes in winter, which makes it possible for tourists to walk across it and touch the spire of the church when it pokes out of the water. It'll likely be a century or more before we see it looking as drained as this again. In October 2018, eight-year-old Saga Vanacek was on holiday with her family in Jönköping County, Sweden. She decided to go for a swim in Vindostern Lake while she was there. That's when she came across this rusty old sword in the water. Saga brought the sword out of the lake with her and called her dad, who immediately suspected that she might have found something valuable. He was right. This is a 1,500-year-old weapon from Sweden's pre-Viking era. There was a drought happening at the time of Saga's visit, meaning the waters of the lake were at a lower level than normal. This might explain how she was able to find the sword when so many people go swimming there every year without finding anything. The silt, mud, and lack of oxygen at the bottom of the lake have combined to keep the blade in an excellent state of preservation. Professional archaeologists were later sent to the lake to see if there was anything else down there with the sword. They were able to locate a 3rd century brooch, but they don't think it's connected. Saga and her family kindly donated the sword to a local museum where it's been cleaned up and placed on display. Of all the things you might find at the bottom of the sea, it's hard to think of anything more alarming than a nuclear reactor. That was the site awaiting a Russian research expedition in Ambrosimova Bay in August 2021. But they didn't just find one reactor, they found two. They believe that the reactors, both of which were damaged before they went into the water, were dumped in the bay from the Soviet Navy submarine K-19 in 1965. Their next job is to safely retrieve them from the water for decommissioning. That process hasn't been started as of the time this video was made. Seawater samples will be taken and checked for radiation before anyone attempts to move the reactors. They were damaged by a coolant leak in 1961, after which the vessel was towed to the Skivel shipyard in Polarny. The reactor compartment wasn't cut out until 1965, at which point it was decided keeping it in the shipyard was too dangerous. Somehow, that made dumping the contaminated reactors and all their spent nuclear fuel in the Kara Sea the next best option. Another Russian research expedition made a startling discovery at the bottom of the Black Sea in 2010. This was no human-made discovery, though. It's a previously unseen natural phenomenon. There at the bottom of the sea is an underwater river. The river's water is separated from the sea around it because of its salinity and the sediment it's picked up from the seabed and is 115 feet deep. It ends in rapids and waterfalls that look similar to those we see on the land, only they're also surrounded by water. This river is technically the sixth largest in the world and has been fully charted by robotic submarines. The salt and sediment-heavy water is so dense that it's still cutting deeper into the seabed and has created floodplains and riverbanks. The source of the water is believed to be the Bosphorus Strait of the Mediterranean, which flows into the Black Sea but then gets separated because of the far lower salt content of the water it encounters. 
Now we know that underwater rivers exist, it's likely we'll find more of them elsewhere in the world when we go looking. In the town of Crosby, Minnesota, USA, is an old iron ore pit that's become a lake. The lake is popular with divers and swimmers, many of whom never notice the horror that lurks at the bottom of it. Those who are brave enough to take the plunge find themselves face to face with Jason Voorhees, the psycho killer from the Friday the 13th series of horror movies. Obviously, there's no such thing as Jason Voorhees. This is a very convincing statue, which was installed at the bottom of the 120-foot deep lake by movie fanatic Curtis Lahr as a prank in 2013. Years have passed since then, but the statue is still there and still looks to be in near-perfect condition. It's so accurate that it even has a machete in its hand. It's doubtful that Curtis got permission from anybody before putting the statue down there, but the authorities have never bothered to come and remove it. Imagine how petrified you'd be if you went for a dive without knowing it was there and suddenly saw it looming at you out of the dark. If you were unlucky enough to drop your smartphone in a lake or river, you'd probably be inclined to write it off as an expensive mistake. Even if it were possible to retrieve it, it's unlikely that it would ever work again. Apparently, we ought to reevaluate that opinion. In June 2018, Erica Bennett dropped her iPhone in the Edisto River, South Carolina, while visiting family. In September 2019, she was astonished when she was contacted by a diver who'd found her phone and told her it still worked. The phone came with a waterproof case, but Erica assumed that a waterproof case was designed to protect the device from the rain, not a full immersion in a river. Losing a phone would be upsetting for most people, but it was especially upsetting for Erica because the iPhone contained text messages from her late father, as well as pictures of them together. Coincidentally, she shares her second name with Michael Bennett, the diver who found it. He said the phone was covered in a black slimy substance when he found it, and he assumed there was no chance it'd work. But it began to charge as soon as he took it home and plugged it in. Incredible! <clears throat> the wreck of MS Zenobia is a popular yet puzzling dive site close to Lanarca, Cyprus. You'll find dozens of tour guides in the area who can take you to the wreck, but none who can tell you how it got there. This ferry wasn't just brand new when it sank in May 1980, it was on its maiden voyage. The most popular theory is that it was simply overloaded with cargo. The vessel was laden heavy with tractor trailers and bound for Syria from Sweden when it began to list to the port side as it approached Greece. The captain ordered an emergency docking in Cyprus and the draining of the ballast tanks. After incorrectly assuming the drainage had solved the problem, he set off again only for the problem to come back with a vengeance just a mile out of the port. He managed to summon rescue boats and got everybody off the stricken ship, but it couldn't be saved and went down with its whole cargo. That's where things get weird. The cargo is said to have been worth $200 million, but nobody ever filed an insurance claim. The cause of the problem that sank it was never identified and no official investigation was ever carried out. Some people say that the Zenobia was actually smuggling illegal weapons to the Middle East. And for all we know, they could be right. Osborne Reef might go down in history as the worst reef in the world. This is a well-intentioned fail of epic proportions. In 1974, a plan was hatched to create an artificial reef off the coast of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, to promote healthy and sustainable marine life. The plan involved taking two million tires, mounting them on concrete jacks, and fixing them in place using steel clips. Unfortunately, somebody involved in the project didn't do their research properly. The steel clips corroded quickly and then snapped, setting the tires free. They've been drifting across the seabed ever since and should now be considered an ecological disaster. The artificial reef failed because it no longer had any structure and the loose tires keep colliding with natural reefs and damaging them by doing so. There's less marine life here now than there was in 1974. There's been an ongoing attempt to recover the tires with assistance from the U.S. military since 2007, 
but as of the end of 2020, only one third of them had been successfully extracted. The rest are still there and are still a threat to marine life in the area. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.